My next build is going to be two floating shelves, and the design for this is roughly based off of an, an article I saw in Fine Woodworking. Um, in order to read those articles, you need to have an online subscription. So if you want detailed plans for this um, to help you with your own measurements, I would recommend getting that subscription and looking up that article. But basically, I'm going to be building these kind of like you would a hollow core door. It'll give you the hardwood look that the customer wants without the added weight. So I'm starting off by cutting down some oak um, quarter inch plywood so it has an oak veneer on the outside into the strips I need and then I'm ripping down some two by sixes for my inside frame so these are going to be about 12 inches wide so in order to get the measurement I just lined them up accounted for the fact that it's going to have a quarter inch um, piece of oak on the front and then set up a stop on my radial arm saw in order to cut all this stuff so once I have the stop in place, I could cut all these, and I believe these ended up being nine and an eighth of an inch. So the in, inside of the door, like I said, is going to be just like a hollow core door. So you'll, you'll glue those skins on either side. It'll give you a nice sturdy shelf um, without the weight. So I'm doubling up, putting ones on the end, and then doubling up the ones in the middle for a little more added strength. And the... the um, shelves are going to be attached with angle brackets as well so the back side is going to be the ledger that screws onto the wall so that uh, part i am not adding glue to so i only added glue to one side of these pieces and then i clamped it all together so that my supports will be only glued to one side of that two by four and this shelf they want two inches thick which means that the inch and a half lumber I'm using is perfect because I'm going to be adding a quarter inch skin on either side. So I ripped those into rough squares. So once I had everything clamped together, I put screws in through both sides just so that I could reuse my clamps. I could screw these together, screw them from the back side as well, and the back side, like I said, will be removable. To build the second one, I just built it right on top of the first one. You could see I'm only adding glue to one side of those pieces. To put the skins on, I already had them cut, so I was just going to glue them, and once again, you'll see I'm only gluing the middle pieces and the front side of, of the wood because that back side has to be removable. Um, when you buy veneer grade plywood, it's a little more expensive and one side will be an A side, one side will be a B side. It's usually pretty easy to tell because the knots and, and um, imperfections will be, will be concealed to one side. So just make sure you're putting your A side on the outside. Once again, more glue, and then I could put my other sheet on top. I cut these long because I'm going to use a trim bit on my router to trim them perfectly to size afterwards. Once I had the first one glued, I could build the second one on top of the first one. So then I have two sandwiches, and then I went through and weighted these. I have cinder blocks in my shop. Those flatten things quite nicely. It was just a matter of using a bunch of cinder blocks and then I added a bunch of clamps onto the workbench so that these shelves were perfectly flat. If they glue flat, they're going to stay flat, especially with this sort of construction. It's almost like a modified torsion box. So then once they were glued, I put a trim bit in my router and I had a lot of excess, so I worked around the corner so I didn't have any tear out and then I trimmed. Um, the front edge of the piece. Once this is trimmed, I'm going to rip it down on the table saw to get a nice flat edge on the back. So I only trimmed um, the three sides, flipped it over, and then did the same thing. I had some glue run out that I made sure I removed before I used the trim bit because if anything on, on the bearing hits that glue, it will leave a little bit of a dent. So then I could go through and take off the back ledger. You can see it pops off since there's no glue or anything on it. And this is going to be the piece that you will attach to the wall. So then that is the inside of my frame. Then I reattached this with only two screws and I sunk them really far into the piece because this back side is the side I'm going to rip. I'm going to rip it all at once so that my ledger and the back side of my plywood is perfectly flat and square. 
So you can see I reattached that ledger with only two screws, countersunk them so that my blade won't hit them, and then rip those square. So now my entire uh, frame of my box is perfectly square, which is really important when attaching anything this long um, to a shelf. So my edges came out not as nice because they weren't perfectly square with the ply, so I ended up just ripping them down a little bit on the radial arm saw, and then those were perfectly square. I had a little bit of tear out from this, which I knew was going to happen, and I did it anyway, which was kind of a bummer, but I ended up fixing that later in the build. So the, the front edges of these panels are going to be skinned with real hardwood. So this is just regular oak. I'm cutting it into a little over two inch strips so that I could have some leeway in the glue up because these are two inches thick. And then I'm going to cut those strips in half. So it's three quarters. You're going to lose an eighth of an inch with the blade. So these two halves ended up being um, a, about a quarter of an inch. A little bit thicker than a quarter so just ripping those in half and I ended up with four because I'm gonna have to do the sides as well these um, panels are 72 inches long and they're about 12 inches wide so you see I have my thin strips so then to attach these I have uh, my blade set at a 45 so I could cut my edge I could put it on to my box measure and then cut the other side. So with miters I like to cut as I go just to make sure my joints come out perfect. You can see I have marked where that other cut is going to be. I can line that up and cut it as well and then just attach it to the top. So in order to attach these I'm using a series of clamps so I can really only do one at a time because I don't have enough. But You can see how I'm just kind of tacking it in place with some tape and then I'm going to go through and really, really hammer it down with, with all of my clamps to hold it in place. This lumber is not bad lumber. Um, I didn't need a ton of it, so I bought the, the red oak at Lowe's that's already planed and jointed, which makes life a little bit easier. It, it did come out a little bit bowed, so I needed a ton of clamps to make sure I didn't have any gaps in the front. And I'll let this set up and then glue the face to the second one as well. Um, since it's still pretty cold out, that was a little bit of a time commitment because I let these set up for about a day and then I had to let the second one set up for about a day as well. But this customer was in no rush, so it ended up working out. Then I could take my back panel off pretty much till about the end of the build and that is because I'm putting the sides on. I didn't want to get any excess glue on the back portion and not be able to take it off. So the sides I cut the exact same way. I left them long and I would trim them down later. So it's just the miter in the front attached to those sides. This is where it's really important that your box is square because if it's not, your miters will not come out square. And then I just use a strap clamp to hold everything in place. I also use a strap clamp on the top with a scrap piece of wood to not mar the finish um, to just pull those edges together. This worked really well. I had enough strap clamps I could glue both of these together at once. Let these sit up overnight as well. And then my faces will be done. Next day I could come in, take all the clamps out, and at this point it was just a matter of sanding these all down. Um, I had a, some burn marks on the front, had to sand those down. For the sides, you could see since I left them long, there's a little bit of material to remove. I used a hand plane for this because it come, oak is really easy to plane. It comes off nicely and I'll get a nice square finish. A simple, simple block plane makes easy work of it. The wood filler I use is a little bit of a higher end wood filler. It's specifically formulated for red oak. I didn't know this at the time, but these were pretty much only getting a very minimal whitewash finish, so I probably wouldn't have used that red oak because it's dyed a little bit darker to accept stain, so it was a little more apparent it was there on the finish I used, but since they're elevated um, off the ground, it you the customer wouldn't notice them. I kind of didn't even notice they were there towards the end. 
So like I said, they had floors that had a, uh, were red oak that had a very, very um, minimal white stain to them. So I had a whitewash water-based stain in my shop that I bought for another project and never used. So what I did was instead of flooding the surface, I put, I put on a very small amount and really worked it into the surface because it's a very minimal look. Once that all set up, which was pretty quick because it is um, water-based, I went through and sanded it down and it left the, the finish of the, the red oak with, like I said, a very, very light white hue. Since it's a water-based finish, I decided to use polycrylic for the finish on top and that really brought out the red oak with that white finish. And I was sending pictures back and forth to the customer as we went. Um, on on um, very particular finishes like this, I like to do that so I don't show up at their house and they're, and they're surprised at the look. And she said it matched well enough. Um, they're going to be off of the floor, so the match was kind of important to get it close, but it didn't have to be exact, which is what it ended up being. To finish off the inside, um, I'm attaching this with angle brackets, but these angle brackets are really expensive. And if I had to buy like 11 inch ones, they were almost $10 a bracket. I was using six per shelf. So what I did was I bought the cheaper, um, I think these were four inch ones. You could see I'm just using a shim to get them all lined up. And these brackets are based off of going in between my middle supports. Um, I had them lined up from the beginning. And then what I did was I took that plywood and I'm just gonna make extensions for these. I'm using plywood because plywood is more dis dimensionally stable than uh, construction grade lumber. So I won't have to worry about this moving around on me as much. I attach those and these are a little thinner than an inch and a half. So I have some play when sliding it into my shelf. So you can see that this will slide into place and that is how this shelf will be held up. Now you'll see it in the pictures because I did get some finished photos for this project. I ended up towing in. So this is the first shelf just found the studs um, and I was able to put four two and a half inch screws through the studs. You could see I towed in that plywood at the end of the day just to really sure up that joint. Once you have them mounted on the wall you could just slide the carcasses right on top of it. So these are the finished pieces. I don't like filming in people's houses so I only got finished photos and that is how they're mounted.